18, right? When he was a bit younger, then he created an innovative test for pancreatic cancer that was hundreds of times more effective than existing models. He's currently working on a bunch of projects for water filtration and purification and, and monitoring. Um, he was on the Intel International Science Fair. And over here, we have Johnny Cohen, and he's holding up one of his, uh, demo of one of his inventions, which is the Green Shield, making school buses more aerodynamic and more energy efficient. And he's currently a student at Columbia. We have Param Joggi, who founded the startup for energy called Ecopia, and he's also worked on a bunch of projects uh, to make things more energy efficient. He goes to Vanderbilt. So first of all, uh, let's go through a couple demos for um, talking about your research. Let's yeah, see. sure. Um, so I'm Johnny Cohen, and um, this is the Green Shield. And the Green Shield was an idea that I came up with in seventh grade after I was walking home from school, and um, I built little Pinewood Derby cars, and um, I took a class on it, and the teacher taught us a little bit about aerodynamics. And so I became really excited about that, and so um, I went on to um, develop the Green Shield at Northwestern, um, which is like this little aerodynamic shield, and it um, makes the school bus uh, pollute less and by about 10% and pays for itself in less than a year. So, I'll take that and start passing it around um, to the audience. Mark, can you next one first? Yeah. Hey guys, my name is Brom Jaggi. Um, so originally my research was on um, emissions control and uh, using bioreactors, uh, algae-based bioreactors to reduce emissions uh, in coal factories and industrial plants. and. Uh, we built smart bioreactors, uh, similar to what Nest is doing for home energy usage, uh, but we, we use Arduino technology to create um, a smart bioreactor using algae for industrial plants. And then from there, uh, Johnny was dealing with the front side of the bus, um, and I decided to deal with the, the back end through the exhaust system. Um, and now we're working on a product that reduces carbon emissions directly from motor vehicles, and we're also working on a mobile app that incentivizes people to be more green um, with monetary discounts at local stores. Um, so I founded my company, Ecovia, about a year ago to bring these ideas to life and uh, really empower the students and youth of this country to uh, build the future that they want to see. So, who wants to take a look at the school bus? Are you so excited about the school bus? Who wants to be the first to take a look? Okay, you do? Oh, I have another question. Who rides the school bus? Does anyone here ride a school bus? I see a couple raised hands. Okay? There we go. Some school All right. bus riders. So, guess how you can make it more efficient? You're going to find out. I have a question. Yeah. Would it work on a regular bus, a city bus? So, um, <laughs> school buses, um, so school buses, there's a misconception that school buses only travel at slow speeds, which make um, like uh, aerodynamics kind of negligible. And uh, city buses mostly travel at slower speeds, um, but school buses, in order to get to their routes, they have to travel on a highway, and so some school buses are traveling at speeds um, above 50 miles an hour. Like for my school district, they had to travel 15 miles just to get to school, and so they do that four times a day. In the morning, they're back, and then in the afternoon, they're back, and so that's 60 miles on a highway where they're traveling at speeds where it really matters to the aerodynamic. And so, um, yeah, I guess um, it's applicable to other, I guess, school bus shapes that are traveling at speeds where uh, aerodynamics are crucial. Fine. So tell us about a time when you really learned a lot of new things or you started from nothing. I guess um, I really started to learn at a young age um, I guess, I mean, I see many of you are young, and um, if your parents let you try and take as many things apart as possible, because I think that you can only become inventive um, after you kind of, I don't know, figure out how some things work, and then kind of use your imagination to try and build other things. Uh, and I, I'm a big believer of trying to figure out stuff on your own. Um, and I think while you're, when you're young, you really uh, are very, very creative because you don't really know what you don't know. And I think that can be um, something that just allows you to be very, very creative. So follow through with your ideas. What are some of your suggestions for everyone here in the audience? How they can get involved with inventing? 
Um, I always like to say, try not to see the things, I see things the way they are, but the way they could be. And if you kind of take an inventive approach to absolutely everything, like, I don't know, the chair we're sitting on, or the chair you're sitting on, or this stage, or this screen, or anything, and kind of just think in ways that everything could be better, because absolutely everything can be improved. Um, absolutely nothing is perfect, and so there is a better way to do everything. And if you can be the person who figures that out, then I think that, um, I mean, the world needs more inventors, and there are a lot of problems. And if you can think of just simple solutions to those, which everyone wants to, um, that's a, I mean, you're already being an inventor. And in one word, this is a bit of a challenge, maybe you can get one or two people to say this. In one word, what is your inspiration that keeps you exploring? The environment. The environment.